Hello friends, you're with the Lonesome Gamer and I'm playing Pendragon. Now we've seen at the end of the last video this um, Epoch card here which uh, allowed the Civitatis to bring in a lot of new armies um, of their militia basically and also to get rid of some cavalry on the board and I made a mistake with this uh, Civitatis at the end of the last turn uh, I placed in many spaces three but then a few steps later during this uh, epoch um, phase, I had to remove one and three rounded down. And in this way I lost about, I think, four troops or something. And it was simply stupid because I didn't remember that that was uh, part of this epoch steps. So instead I, uh, I arranged that a little different so that at some regions I now have only two. So therefore I didn't have to remove any of my Kivitatis troops. I think that's a clear advantage and because it was more or less just ignorance of the rules I think it's just fair for them to do that. So now we're all again eligible. Looks pretty good for the Kivitatis. They... Uh, and yes, uh, the, the the victory conditions changed now a little bit because um, Britain is now in autonomy and no longer under Roman rule. That means that the Romans don't need that much prosperity and prestige. They only need 61 at 51. Britain control must be 28. At the moment it's 31. And they must be, there must be a civilian dominance, and that is also the case. So right at the moment, if now another Epoch card would show up, the Kivitatis would have won the game. The Scots uh, condition didn't change. They still need 46 resources and four settlements. And these uh, the Saxons... Uh, also didn't change. They want also uh, I think 25 resources or control of 10 territories and in the end I think they also want four settlements in addition to that. So let's see we have now here this is our actual event card Nial Neugierlach, I think that's what it's called. And the Scots are going to use that. They have a lot of problems when it comes to raids at the moment because this ocean is now patrolled. So therefore, um, they trigger that event because that can help them quite a bit here. So let's see what that actually says. Here we go. Nial Neugialach, which means Nial of the Nine host Hostages, forebar of the Uy Nail family that dominated Ireland from the 6th to the 10th centuries AD, was a semi-legendary semi Irish king who probably reigned sometime between the late 4th and the mid 5th centuries AD. <laughs> It is difficult to draw a certain chron chronology from the existing sources, but he is credited with having exercised some kind of supreme rule over a large part of Ireland, mainly the central and eastern parts, famously receiving hostages from subdued provinces, and to have been actively raiding Britain and possibly even Gaul, where he is believed to have found his death. In any case, the Nial Neugialach box represents the higher degree of control 
that a high king in Ireland would be able to exert, focusing energies and men on favor but bigger rates, making the targeting of major strongholds much more viable. Conversely, the unshaded capability represents Irish energies turning inward to local rivalries rather than being projected outward to attack Britain. Okay, so, there we go. This is the card, and uh, we're going to use that one here, coordination. Scotty raids may target Nial Neugialach box, place the raiders there, and may add any from there as extra raiders into other target spaces. Okay, so this is now the box. The cool thing is, if I'm not mistaken, I can bring now as many raiders, well I can basically simply use them as a target space, this box. And the good thing is that it doesn't count as uh, an adjacent box to the patrolled ocean. So I can get there my raiders more easily and from there in the next raid I can simply bring as many raiders as I want to any of my target spaces. So if I do an attack somewhere against a hill fort or so and I see, ah damn, I don't have enough raiders there, I need two additional ones, I can simply take them from here and bring them in here and that is pretty awesome. So um, in that way I might somehow even out the penalty of the patrolled ocean here. Okay, a raid happened and it was kind of successful for the, uh, the Saxons. Um, Okay, it's the um, the uh, Kivitatis now, and yeah, they're gonna do. They want to battle these guys out of this region because this region has a um, a value of three, population value of three, and if the Saxons do another raid and come up with more of these raiders, they might be able to destroy the city here or the town, and then this uh, Britain control would drop down. So I want to get the Saxons out of this region. I have a lot of money, so therefore I can bring in guys from different areas. Here, for example. Um, yeah, that should be cool. Okay, so first I'm going to do the reinforce action and what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll a die, subtract two, and I can then bring in that many troops there. Now, question is, I could bring the Dux troops with me. But only if they agree. The question is, do they want to agree? Well, on the one hand, they will of course help um, the Kivitatis keeping the space. But then again, even if they don't agree, Kivitatis should be able to do it all alone. And it would give them some, uh, some prestige if they help them with that battle there. So let's see. We're going to start up here. Okay, that's a five. So we could bring up to three troops in there. And the Kivitatis wants to bring in one. And uh, yeah, asking now, hey, 
Maybe they actually don't want one in there because there is only a Civitatis city there. So it is possible that the troops of the Romans then start to attack the city. And that's something I want to avoid. So I guess what I do then instead is, um, because the Romans are also interested in the Civitatis losing control over the provinces. The provinces especially where only they have uh, fortresses and not the Romans. So here, for example, if they would attack here, the town here, it wouldn't really help because they still would keep a, a common control. It would still remain under, under Britain control. But if they destroy this one here or that one here, Britons would lose control. So therefore, the Romans might be interested in actually attacking these spaces. Okay, so then we move... <clears throat> Well, I might even cons maybe even considering bringing them both in here. We just found out that an attack here is not too interesting. Okay, no one can move from there. Well, then again, maybe I should... I think I will leave one here. And then here. Nah. And the last one comes from here, maybe. Oh shit, that was pretty poor. Anyway, I want to do that fight, so I'm going to remove three of these guys. And they're going to also kill my people. Because they're only worth half their strength, basically. But I think that's worth it. Uh, I hope so, at least, because I managed to decrease their numbers. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, whatever, we will find out. Maybe it was stupid, because now this is unprotected. Maybe I shouldn't do it, actually. Nah, yeah. I think I don't want to do that. That That is bullshit. I don't want to leave this space unprotected. So I'm not going to do that battle. Although I'm actually not sure if this is even possible. Um, let's see. Yeah, the problem is that the reinforcement actually uh, accompanies a battle action. So basically that means I have to do the battle. Okay. Well, anyway. That probably wasn't too clever because that might now really allow the Saxons to get into this area and take out the unprotected city. Okay, we're seeing a raid here. The Saxons had to pay their last resources to be able to roll three dice and then we would have seen a deep raid into Katu Velani, Velauni and look what we've rolled three times a one, we gotta subtract three, so none of the raiders made it through. There goes our valuable money. We could only afford a minor raid in... Yeah. Hard to tell, actually. I should have considered that earlier. I'm considering this area, maybe. Maybe that makes more sense. I need definitely some money here. Oh boy. Okay, that's it. Complete waste of money. Shit. That sucks. So, yeah, we have a massive problem now. No money anymore. And then it's uh, the Romans. And, uh, uh, yeah, I think they're going to go with this command here. Give Wisse. Let's see what that is. That's a 40. Mm, there we go. Okay. There we are. Another major rivalry between Kivitatis arose between the Dubuni, 
centered around the capital of Curinium and the Roman colony at Glevum and the Catovellauni of Verulanium. It is now widely accepted that the oldest known settlement of Germans in sub-Roman Britain that on the upper Thames around modern Dorchester, far from any coast, was established by the Catovellauni to guard against the Dobuni to their west and possibly the Atribates south of the Thames. This settlement thrived and became known as the Gewisse, the faith keepers, before eventually being subsumed into the Bergen, Bergioning kingdom of, the, of West Saxons. West Sussex, Saxons, wow, okay. So, yeah, that's the one. And remove two prosperity each and five pieces total other than calf or fort. No, that's bullshit. Place Saxon Federati in Kartuvelauni. Three warbands and, if none there, one settlement. That's a hired muscle. Okay, so that is possible. We can place three warbands there. And they pose now a serious threat for this, um, this hill fort and uh, also one settlement. Oops, damn it. Okay. So, another raid, this time from the Scots. They can roll two dice, paying one a renown per, per raid or per target space. And now we're actually gonna go into this one here, Nial Neugialach. So, okay, that's not bad. That's, these are five raiders that are now placed in here. And we don't have to subtract anything. Here it's different. We got to subtract two because of the Roman fortresses. And that means we end up with two guys in there. And we capture one of these. Try a sim similar thing here. Okay, three. And we get this thing here. And finally, down here. Yeah, great. Nothing at all. Okay. But the next one is more promising simply because we got now five here kind of in reserve that we can then also bring in any target space uh, in addition into play. So that is definitely pretty awesome. Okay, the Kivitat is passed. They are now eligible and now it's definitely time for them to play this one here. They might have, maybe they should have done that before. The uh, Kymbrogi. Um, let's see what that says. Kymbrogi is a Welsh word variously translated as meaning companions of the heart or sword brothers and has come to mean fellow countrymen among Britons. The Welsh still call themselves Cymru and their country Cymru after this word, which is also the root for the names of Cumbria and Cumberland. The growing use of this term seems to be contemporary with the shift of the center of gravity of Britons from the southeastern and central lowlands, with their Roman cities to the highlands of western and northern Britain studded with hill forts. 
what has been sometimes seen as a barbarization of the romano britons probably reflects both an evolution away from the overexposed cities back to more easily defensible fortresses a shift from tribal assemblies to more personal bonds of loyalty as well as the relative increase in influence of the less romanized tribes at the fringes of the empire as the Britons progressively lost control of the lowlands. Unlike other regions such as Gaul and Spain, the populations of Roman Britain appear to have elected to sacrifice urban life and many of the features of Roman culture, though the Latin language and many special forms including Christianity remaining strong among Britons in order to gird themselves for a struggle to the death with the invading Germans. So that card finally allows us now to bring in our good military troops and we definitely need those. At nine comitatus to available, okay, In each of five hills regions, with Britain control, place one hill fort in a vacant site and one comitatus. Shift to civilian dominance. Well, that's already the case. Hills are home terrain for, uh, terrain for Civitatis from now on. Civitatis get epoch round revenue from hill forts, not towns. Okay, that's kind of interesting. So, um... We're definitely more interested in building hill forts from now on. Um, okay. So, again, we need some kind of marker for that. Okay. And, yeah, so we can place five hill forts in hill regions with Britain control. That might be a problem, but I think we maybe we have that many. Each of five hills regions with Britain control plays one hill fort and one comitatus. Okay, so let's see. We have Britain control in here. So yeah, we can do it here. Okay. Same here. And also here, actually. So these were three. Here it's not going to be possible. Neither here, neither here. Nah. Yeah, that wasn't too great then. There are no vacant sites anymore. Well, okay. Still, I mean, we have now eight hill forts. That's at least something. And then we come to the next cart. So the Saxons will return from their terrible raids and they were really in a bad shape there so they cannot even saddle I think because they don't have the money to do that um, yeah oh, wait a minute okay well yeah we could try to saddle to bring some war bands into play at least Okay, that's something. So we're going to try it here first. Roll a die for... Wait a minute, it's the four, it's a six side, all right? Yeah, we need a four or six. Well, okay, so we can place one warband here. And these guys go back 
Do we need control or something? Ah, no, but our pieces have to outnumber all others. And that is not the case. So that, that is not allowed anyway. Um, so basically, we could only do it here, basically. Meh. Okay, why not? Hmm, well, that's another one. Oh boy, that, that's going slowly. And finally, we can do it here, but we cannot settle there either. At least we get two more bucks. So overall, five, which is not too impressive. And the Raiders all go back. Wah. Yeah, the Saxons, they are in a pretty bad shape, but so are all the Barbarians at the moment. We'll see, maybe that changes, maybe some Epoch cards come into play or so, which give them a boost. I mean, the Scots might be uh, doing better with this uh, Nial Neugeil Lach thing, but uh, at the moment it really doesn't look well. So, the, the Scots, they're going to play this event, St. Patricius. And uh, that's a permanent event. Highborn Britain hostage. All ransom rolls plus one. That's pretty awesome. And uh, let's see. According to his own confessio, St. Patrick was born in Britain into a wealthy family and was 16 years old when he was captured by Irish raiders, resulting in his spending six years in Ireland as a slave. After he escaped and rejoined his family, he became a cleric and returned to Ireland as a Christian missionary where, his, where he is regarded as having provided the decisive impulse to the conversion of the island to Christianity. As with most of the history of, his of this period, dates are uncertain, but he is generally considered to have lived in the second half of the 5th century. He is also known for having admonished a British king that he names as Coroticus for having taken some of his converts captive while raiding in Ireland. It is not clear whether Coroticus was based in Western Wales or Scotland's Strathclyde region. Okay, so that could be definitely uh, an advantage for the Irish. Remember, they or for the for the Scots, they want uh, basically a high renown. So, if they can get additional renown for raids or ransom, that is a pretty cool thing for them. Well, now that I consider it, it was probably not a very clever move to bring some Federati in to Cato Velauni, simply because I could have attacked that and then it would have been no longer under control with the Romans. But now, um, these guys will keep it under Britain control. I mean, I, can, I could not pay them at the beginning of the next epoch phase. So yeah, then this would be under Saxon control. But I would prefer not to have it under anybody's control or maybe even under Roman, well, yeah, not to have it under anybody's control basically um, before I have it under Saxon control. But okay, now it's a little late. Okay, so the Romans. I guess what they want to do is they want to bring in some more troops. And to do that, they need money. However, 
they could play this card in the next turn. That's pretty awesome. So maybe that is even more in their interest. Huh, that's interesting. Let me see. Okay, so the Romans pass again. And that gives the Kivitatis three bucks. Um, the interesting thing is I want to play the next card, but I want to play it for the dark, uh, for the shaded action. So that's, uh, that's pretty brutal, but it's really bad for the Kivitatis. So that is Pelagius. Let's see who that guy was. Pelagius, 369 to 418 AD, was a British-born ascetic moralist who preached a doctrine of free will known as Pelagianism, which became widely popular in the late empire. This doctrine was notably opposed by Augustine of Hippo Regius, and Pelagius was declared heretic by the Council of Carthage in 411. Pelagianism was especially popular in Britain, prompting the mission of German Germanus of Auxerre in 429. Dissenting religious views would typically bring much disruption and even destruction, notwithstanding the possibility of whole communities electing to relocate or cut all ties with the dominant credo. Yeah, so I'm going to do that heresy thing. Remove all non-Federati Civitatis pieces from any two spaces. I think that's pretty awesome because in this way I want to do it here actually. Okay, so that means that they lose control there and then I'm considering maybe doing it even here. Yeah. Yeah, why not? I think it's going to be very hard. So I'm going to I'm going to take these suckers out here. So they lose control of two more spaces or two more population. And now they don't fulfill the victory conditions anymore. They lost also two hill forts, which gives them less money then in the epoch step. So this northern area is now completely empty. And it is definitely a little brutal. But uh, I think. That was definitely a. Uh, it was it was necessary that the Romans did that because otherwise, it is just very likely that the uh, Civitatis could have won that game. So the Comitatis, they did a muster action, which was uh, pretty expensive. Ten. Uh, renown or 10 whatever resources but that allowed him to bring or them to bring all their troops into play we have now a few comitatis here for example also here and here in addition here a lot of militia here so maybe I can manage to recapture these northern provinces Okay, and now I want to do a rule action. Uh, simply, let me see. Uh, so I can gain basically three wealth. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I can gain three wealth. 
to three by paying six resources and I have so much money it really doesn't matter actually just want to make sure that the civilian dominance remains I think the difference here is below five then it becomes a military dominance again and that is definitely not in my interest okay what the heck is that oh shit shit ah no 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 actually I think it was here I thought it was kind of yeah okay so that leaves now these two guys a little bit and the I think the Saxons actually want to go first and they want to do that event here Tharnet that's also a permanent event your saddle is maximum two spaces not one that uh, I think could be very valuable and I think actually I I might have messed this up here earlier on but it didn't have any consequences because I didn't roll for um, I was only successful in one space anyway and that was here I think I rolled in every three spaces and that is something I should not have done okay period sources concur that the Saxon, in reality probably a mix of Jude, Frisian, Saxon and maybe even some Frank, mercenaries under Hingist received the Isle of Tharnet at the northeastern tip of Kent to settle. Separated from the British mainland by the now filled up tidal Wonsum Channel, across which stood the Roman port and Saxon shore fort of Rutupia, Thanet was a low-laying but fertile island located in an ideal position to control the entrance of the Thames estuary and the British Channel. It is believed to have formed the nucleus of the later Jutish Jude Kingdom of Kent. Interestingly, possibly because of its topography lying often hidden in the sea mists or because of its ephemeral nature due to the tidal channel, it appears to have been associated by the ancient Celts with the domain of the dead and may even have been the basis for the legend of the Isle of Avalon. At least one modern historian believes the Wonsum channel to have been the location of Kamlan, Kamlan, the Crooked Brook, Arthur's exclusive, elusive last battle, which he thinks was fought between Arthur, supported by his Saxon allies, and a rebel Briton army. Edwin Pace seems to be that historian. Okay, so this is another shaded event and we now have already four of those so the barbarians are getting stronger and stronger okay so we want to do raids uh, we want to do four raids one goes to this Nile Neugialach box another one here Novante this one here Votadini and one from D angli now here we have to subtract two because of the two fortresses here and here we have to subtract also two because of these two fortresses if they come from Caledonia you have to subtract two there okay so first I want to send my guys to Njal Neugialach that's four Okay, cool. And then, let's see, I want to bring in some guys here. That's, wow, that's six. Pretty awesome. Okay. That's four. 
five, six, and that gives me two plunder. By the way, I have to spend four bucks for this, two, three, four for this whole action. Now, I'm going to continue up here. And by the way, I used a ransom action or a ransom feat. So now up there, I'm going to roll two dice. And that's four then. Well, actually, I think I placed two too many here, right? Yeah, probably. So I, I forgot to subtract the two. I'm not absolutely sure, but I'm pretty sure about that. So we have four here. That means we can also carry two loot there. And finally, here at Novante. Okay, pretty awesome. Five go there. Cool. So, three, four, five. And now comes the cool part. I can now try. First of all, I can now take ransom because the plunder is now done from any space with a stronghold. So I would get now one resource from the Romans, which is added to mine. And uh, wait a minute, I did. I oh, yeah, well, that's the only one. Okay, still. And then I can now place these raiders wherever I need them. I don't have to take them all out of the box, but uh, I think I'm pretty much interested in doing that. So I guess, well, let me see. First of all, I want to destroy that fortress. Now let's see how many guys do I need to do this. Um, ah, shit. Damn it. Okay, we have a fortress. We have only one guy sitting in that fortress, so we would need seven to take these out. Okay, now let's see. Okay, maybe we should take a little more so that we can grab some of this plunder here. On the other hand, I wanna try to bring in a few war bands here in the north. So I'm gonna place, yeah, definitely some. Eh. Does that make sense? Maybe I should focus on a single area for now. So you know what, I think I'm gonna... On the other hand, I'm allowed to do it in two areas. I could try here, but that's a little risky. I think I'm gonna place more here then instead. Okay. Cool. Damn, does that make sense or do I want to place these guys also here and then make sure that I bring a settlement in here? Maybe that's a better idea. I'm going to place all the guys in there. Okay, cool. So, and then uh, I want to attack that fortress here. And, well, the guy retreats into the fortress. So let's see. First of all, the fortress has a escalate defense of one and a garrison unit of one. Okay, so four of my guys are killed right away, which sucks. But okay, there they go. And then they do two damage and I do two damage and in the end 
I'm still not allowed to take any additional plunder, but still I think it's pretty cool that the fortress is gone so there and the cavalry is also destroyed. That means now that they lose prestige, I think two prestige, which is pretty painful. They would have lost even more because the calf was destroyed, I think at least. But oh no, they maybe not actually. Wait a second. Let me see. Uh, if cavalry fought and its side lost fewer pieces than the enemy, at plus one prestige. I think that is actually the case. Yeah, they definitely lost fewer pieces. So I guess we can add another prestige here. But because a, a fort was destroyed, Where the heck? Each Ford, yeah, prestige minus two. Okay. So, Scots managed to bring now some of their pieces on the board, mainly because of this awesome box here. <coughs> okay. Kivitatis will march. They have to pay two bucks per space of origin. So overall these were ten bucks again. One, two, three, four. F well actually I forgot to spend two more. And their goal is now to retake these completely uncontrolled regions, specifically here in the center. They are worth quite a bit. So let's see. I mean that's also not bad. Okay, first of all hmm. Okay, I'm gonna move in. Uh, tough choice. Maybe with two guys in here. Definitely here. Also with two militia. One comitatis in here, probably also with two militia and one comitatis. I might leave maybe one, one, com eh, I don't know, man. I think that's fine. And up here. I think I want to go down there. Three militia. Maybe even four. And well, now we got these guys left. Not sure if I want to move here or there. Problem is, it's not good enough to build a stronghold in the next turn because if I want to do that well wait a minute what I could do is I could move hmm Yeah, hard to tell actually. Should I move with these guys at all? Yeah, I mean maybe it, it might make sense. 
So I think I'm actually going to move here more into the center. And who cares about this province? It's not that important, I guess. So, yeah, I think I'm fine. And, yeah, then the, the Romans could do a limited command, but they definitely want to want to prevent this event from happening here. The, the Roman fleet neglected, set all seas to no patrol. That would be horrific for the Britons. Therefore, the Romans gonna pass, which gives again the Tivitatis three more bucks. Okay. So yeah, actually the Britons or the Civitatis did that transfer, so they have now a wealth of 13. And uh, yeah, nothing, no shifts occur here. Okay. Nobody fulfills the victory conditions. And now we see the epoch event. And that is Constantine the third. Let's check that. It was 78. I don't think the event has a lot of consequences. But let's see anyway. Oh gosh, there's a lot to read here. Boy, I'm tired. I think I'm not going to read all that. <laughs> Sorry, folks, but this is a little too much for me. Uh, now, the big deal is here. Bid for the purple, if desired. Dux pays three resources, each to remove from two to four cavalry. Yeah, I don't have any money, so I simply cannot do it. If I would remove enough and roll lucky, I could then come back to Rome and rule with military dominance. But that's not going to happen, okay? So no consequence from this one. And... Uh, yeah, so now we're going to see, uh, wait a minute, what happens next? Ah, there we go. The revenue. Okay, I'm going to do this off camera. Okay, now we have another real disaster at that point. And that is that um, the Dukes has to pay one resource per fort, or if they can't pay it, it goes away. Well, they have exactly one resource. So, question is, do, does the Kivitatis wants to pay resources for these fortresses? Well, now that the channel is no longer patrolled or that these oceans are no longer patrolled, the fortresses don't serve the Kivitates anymore. It's only maybe these two up here, but the rest is, is quite useless. So therefore, they might as well say, you know, I don't know if I want to do that. However, the thing is, if we destroy all the fortresses, that would mean that my hill forts are then basically all reasonable targets for the cavalry to attack because uh, that would mean that then Roman control would be lost. So therefore, hey, maybe I'm gonna say, okay, you know, I'm gonna pay your shitty fortresses and in that way I also protect um, my Britain controlled areas because if you destroy my towns and my hill forts, you still have a fortress 
sitting in there and that means that it's still under Britain control. Therefore, all my areas are kind of safe, at least to a little, to, to a certain degree. Okay, I'm going to pay for these hill forts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to pay eight bucks. And that means we're down to 63. Okay, so the roads can no longer be maintained. And then we can relocate the cavalry. So at the end of this epoch round, the map changed drastically. We can see that all these Comitatus troops, they had to move back into their hill forts, respectively towns. And uh, yeah, so uh, big parts of Britain are now simply uncontrolled without any population or without any troops in, inside. And that also leaves space maybe for barbarians or we're going to see there's uh, a lot of interesting options now. The game might take a different direction now. We see also now the first barbarian settlements here and also up there. So yeah, um, I guess it's going to be interesting to see the next rounds and also to see who's actually fighting whom. It's probably again the Romans who will fight the Britons or more or less everybody's going to fight the Britons. We'll see about that. Scott's managed to make quite a bit of money, uh, 26 resources. Okay, so uh, yeah, that was a long one, I guess. Hope to see you on the next, uh, next video or on lonesomegamer.com. Bye.